Welcome to the Volbros. My name is Evan. This is my brother, Simo Hitmo. And we are two Volbros who are actually bros in real life. And we are very excited to have you with us this evening. Man, oh man, it is a fun time to be a Tennessee baseball fan. No doubt about that. Uh, huge weekend on Rocky Top. Had the uh, just a ginormous day Saturday. Uh, all the events on campus. She had the orange and white game followed by the baseball game. That was an orange out. Tremendous baseball game. People got to see a pitching duel, which is rare in college baseball nowadays. And then, uh, you know, softballs at Mississippi State. They won the series today. Uh, so just a huge weekend. Uh, Mina Likey's already joining us. Hey, Mina Likey, good to have you with us. She said, evening bros, evening chat. Absolutely. Austin said, let's go. Absolutely, man. Glad you're with us, Austin. Uh, whether you're joining us on Facebook, YouTube, or X, uh, hey, we, we appreciate you joining us. Uh, Mr. Osborne's with us. Well, he said, go big orange. Welcome, Mr. Osborne. Appreciate you joining us. Uh, Mina Likey gave us a like. I appreciate that. Uh, she helps me. That, uh, Mina Likey, I don't know if you realize that. You probably do because you're like, he, dude never remembers to say it. But uh, she helps me by reminding me in the chat to say, please like the, the, <laughs> the video. And uh, it'd be, if you subscribe, that'd be awesome. And then if you shared it, that'd be even cooler. Uh, so we appreciate that, Mina Like you, you help us out big time, Georgia boy. I'm loving this man. He keeps coming back. He's he's a he's a Volboro now. Like, he's a, I think he's a Vol fan. Honestly, um, he said, "How's it going, bros? Hope you had a good spring game, whatever you call it. Uh, the orange and white game, absolutely." Um, so, uh, uh, let's see. Oh, that's cool. Mina Like you said, hit the like button and tell us which number like you were. That's cool. Oh, uh, that's a good idea. See, she's innovative. I'm just like, yeah, that's awesome. That's great. <laughs> I like that, Mina Lagi. Um, Georgia Boy said he wouldn't go quite that far to say he's a Tennessee fan. He just enjoys hanging out with the Volbros and all the people in the chat. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, you are welcome anytime, buddy. All right. Well, yesterday, Orange and White game, we're going to start with that. Uh, anytime you got football, then it's a good day. And uh, we had college football yesterday. A lot of people sitting out. I understand why. Uh, get that. Uh, Georgia boy said he loves college sports. I do too, man. That's, that's why we do this. Absolutely. Um, Rustin, I'm going to ask you three questions. Like, and I know that's like what reporters hate or people <laughs> on when they're being a press conference, they're like, what was your second question? What was your third question? Uh, so I'm going to ask you three and, and you got to remember, <laughs> uh, first of all, what were your general thoughts about the orange and white game? Secondly, and, and this is where I want people to chime in in the comments as well. I want you. I want you to let us know who you thought stood out, who, who had a good day. Who had, what, you, you could, it could be a player or a position group; it doesn't matter. Uh, so let us know who who you thought stood out. And then the last part is what. Now this is specific to a position group. This isn't specific to a specific, not Pacific, uh, specific to a player. What position group do you think people should be most concerned about? after what we've seen yesterday. Um, and obviously the portal is about to open up the spring portal window. And so things could drastically change over the next two weeks, <laughs> but based on what you saw yesterday in the orange and white game, what were your general thoughts? And this is what I want people in the comments to chime in about what player or position group impressed you. And then the other thing I want people to chime in about as well in the comments was uh, what um, what position group are you most concerned about? Uh, Georgia boy said he thought Boo Carter was good. Absolutely. He was one of my dudes. Absolutely. Uh, so, And it's Chattanooga native where Rustin and I are from. So that's exciting to see him playing well. So, Rustin, who was... Uh, did did you see that on the screen just then or was that just me oh, okay cool that's, that's just mine wigging out all right so rustin what were your general thoughts and, and then position group and that kind of thing um well first of all to anyone who puts any stock in the spring game don't yeah, um, yeah. it's it's not legitimate if it was um dayton sneed would be getting serious heisman consideration <laughs> um because this is this is the second year in a row that Dayton Sneed has tore up the orange and white game. Um, Dude, people were seriously pumped about Dayton Sneed on Twitter after the game, too. 
They were pumped about him last year too. And then he played a total of like three snaps the entire season when it mattered. So, um, you know, don't put a whole lot of stock in the orange and white game. Um, you know, Hang on just a second. Mr. Osborne said Bru- Boo Carter played at Bradley Central, my school alma mater. That's awesome, Mr. Osborne. So, uh, yep, Boo, uh, his senior year, you're right, went to Bradley Central. Uh, very, very cool to see him there. Uh, cool to have a guy from our area playing so well up up at UTK right now. And, you know, like you said, she loves Boo Carter. Absolutely. Uh, go ahead, Rustin. So don't put any stock in the spring game. Um, the game that we really should put stock in happened a few days ago behind closed doors. Uh, the the closed scrimmage that happened earlier this week, that's the real spring game. Um, you know, that's that's when they really find out who who they can trust and who probably needs to develop a little bit. Um, so, you know, first impressions, um, I hate the format just do i wish we would just stop having a spring game if we're gonna randomly give touchdowns to whatever color we feel like depending on which direction we're pointing and which quarterback is in at the time and you know the one-on-one punt to punt returner stuff kickoff to kickoff returner why even do that like those guys are gonna punt and kick all they want on the sideline just let them stay over there and let's not even waste time with that um you know, the, the whole thing, I understand it's great for the fans, but if we're not going to have a true scrimmage, just don't do it. Like, it's it's just a waste <laughs> of time. Um, you know, you're, you're just looking for excuses to get people hurt. Um, you know, I thought, I thought receivers did a good job. I thought quarterbacks did a good job. Um, I thought our front seven looked really good, even though half of them didn't play. Um, it just speaks to the depth we have up there. Um, I won't give up what I'm concerned about, but just in general, I thought it was, it was interesting. Here's, here's where I think we've, we've missed the boat as a, as a organization when it comes to the spring game. Ole Miss had their spring game yesterday. They had a dunk contest, which was won by former Vol Brandon Turnage, by the way, um, and they had a sorority house tug of war on the field um, during the spring game. So, you know, Lane Kiffin is all about selling tickets and he realizes that the spring game isn't going to do it. So he's coming up with as many alternatives as he can to try to make it interesting. And kudos to him for recognizing that the spring game is a waste of time and trying to do something new and different. Um, if you haven't seen the video footage of Brandon Turge's, Turnage's dunk that won the dunk contest, pretty stinking impressive. Um, it was a, it was basically a, a reverse windmill, um, and he's about eight feet off the ground when he hammer dunks that thing. <laughs> um, Rick Barnes might have needed to take a look. Um, it was pretty stinking impressive. Um, you know, so not a fan of the spring game. I'd be fine if we got rid of it forever, but. I know it's a great thing for fans. And so, you know, even though we limited it to 10,000, so it wasn't a great thing for a whole lot of fans. So, you know, maybe next year when the Neyland renovation's done and we can open it up to more people, they'll do something different and make it a little more interesting. But I just found myself fast forwarding through a lot of time watching it because it just wasn't worth watching. All right, so what's your position group of concern? Or did you give your your people who impressed you? Um, Yeah, I thought the quarterbacks played really well. It's hard to know how well they played because they were playing two-hand touch, um, which I also hate. Um, you know, let's find yeah, out. Yeah, Jake, Jake Merkley's long touchdown run, that was not that would not have been a touchdown if, if they no. could tackle each other. <laughs> no. Guys, guys are literally closing in on the quarterbacks and then reaching out with a hand to pop them on the shoulder pad and slowing down as they got used loose, uh, close to them. You know, Jake Merklinger took advantage of the fact they were slowing down and was making juke moves in the open field. And I, I guarantee you, every corner, every DB, every safety, every linebacker, when they watch that film back, Merck's going to hear about it. Like they, they're not going to take kindly to that. <laughs> um, you know, he absolutely took advantage of two hand touch and tried to make himself stand out. Um, and the officials were generous to him for not blowing the whistle on those. Yeah. Appreciate the aggression. Love the fact that he wants to take off like that and make something happen. That's good. Um, but 
if those guys were playing at full speed, he probably doesn't have a leg right now. Um, so, <laughs> you know. Um, Position of concern? Yeah, safeties. Uh, I, and, and some of that, it's hard, again, it's hard to tell. Like when you're in a, when you're in that kind of a game, if you can even call it that, you know, they're playing very vanilla, basic defenses. I felt like the offense was a little more open than the defense was, um, which was probably intentional. You know, it's for the fans. It's not for the players. And, you know, there was a couple of times our our safeties who were covering the slots got beat pretty badly. Um, Chaz Nimrod got a touchdown on one of those. Um it was a little concerning how Jordan Thomas played. I don't think it's I don't think it's something to worry about in the future because it's not what he showed in live reps this past year. But you know, Boo Carter did a pretty good job. Jordan Thomas did not. Um so I wouldn't be it wouldn't hurt my feelings if they went in the portal after the spring and found an extra safety with some with some years on him. Um it would be nice to have a little bit of veteran leadership back there. Yeah, I think that's a great I think that's a great observation. So my general thoughts well first let's go through what some folks are saying here. Austin said instead of doing what we did, they could just do a skills competition. Instead of having the punter and the, the punt returner out there on the on the field by themselves and the snapper. Uh, my favorite my favorite part of that was Mike Eckler told the punt returners to pretend to take off the first three steps. So they're literally on the field by themselves. Yeah. They're catching it and they're yeah. exploding out for three steps and then stopping. It's like what are we doing? If they were letting the rush get to them a little bit and let the, you know, let the teammates get down the field. <laughs> mm -hmm. The ghost runners are getting down. The field. <laughs> uh, let's see. Austin said, it doesn't surprise me that Kiffin found a way to get the shorty girls on the field. That's, that's what I was thinking actually. As, he knows as how to sell tickets. Uh, hey, big orange to their credit, said, If you haven't seen the video to their credit, it's pretty stinking impressive. Some of those girls had some strength going on. It was, they were, <laughs> they, they were pulling that rope. Like there was no tomorrow. Uh, Big Orange Vol said, Vol sweep the corn dogs three to nothing in Knoxville on a beautiful Sunday evening in the fresh East Tennessee air. Yep. We're going to get to that. We sure will. Mina, like he said, her mom went to Red Bank. Hey, how cool is that? Absolutely. That's awesome. Very cool. Uh, right here in the Chattanooga area. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Georgia Boy said, How long was your spring game? It didn't seem long. long. It was just over two hours. I think it was about two hours and 15 minutes, I think. Maybe maybe what? two and a half hours, actually. What's what's sad is we played a whole normal first half, then third and fourth quarter was running clock, and it still took over two hours. It it needed to end. Uh, I think there's a running clock part of the first half too, and it still took so it took forever. I mean, it was mm -hmm. long. Um, let's see. Big Orange Vol said, "I'm concerned about our DBs, but we should be hammering some quarterbacks in the backfield." Totally agree. Uh, totally agree. Yeah, you know, they got Again, 13. It's hard to say if there's anything to be concerned about because you just don't know what the plan was and what they're even allowed to do. I mean, it was pretty much every down, four man rush, either drop in zone or play man. There was nothing, there was no wrinkles, there was nothing special. It was just basic defense. Um, let's see. Mr. Osborne said defensive line impressed me as a group. Uh, which I mean, like like they were saying on the broadcast, they have 13 guys right now that they're willing to rotate on the defensive line, and there's a 14th coming in the summer with Jamal Wallace gets there. So that's a lot of folks on the defensive line. He said DBs and running backs are concerned. Running backs because of injuries, DBs because of poor play. However, I don't think Willie Martinez is a good coach, good recruiter only. And he agreed. He agreed with what you just said a minute ago. So here's my take on what we saw yesterday. Uh, first of all, the fans turned out, you know, they weren't even allowed, many of them weren't even allowed to go in the stadium, and yet they're there for the ball walk. But Vol Nation is undefeated. I mean, like, there, there is no greater fan base than Vol Nation. There is no more passionate fan base than Vol Nation. Vol Nation's undefeated. That was a big takeaway from yesterday. Um, another takeaway, I was very, very impressed with Jake Merklinger's ball placement. Uh, there was a couple of post routes and, you know, routes over the middle that, I mean, dude was putting the ball on the spot. It was great. It was great to see uh, from a true freshman who should still be in high school. Okay. That's one thing we got to remember. 
the dude is an early enrollee. He would normally be like going to prom this weekend or something. He's supposed to be a senior in high school, and yet he's out there with some guys who are probably 22, 23 years old. And he he was just putting it on the money. And and so that was that was fun to see. That was good to see. Um as far as other position groups that impressed me or other players who impressed me, I'll give you two, and they're both on the defensive side of the ball. Um, well, it was really fun to see Edwin Spillman just all over the place. Uh, dude was everywhere. And and I think Vol fans need to get used to that because that's the way he's going to be for the next three to four years. He's going to be all over the place. Um, another defensive guy, and I'm going to say the, who Georgia boy mentioned earlier, Boo Carter. He had a, he had a great day. Um, fourth and two in the first half, fourth and two, we, we get up on the line of scrimmage, try to run the ball to get a first down and Boo Carter makes a tackle in the backfield for a loss on fourth and two. That was awesome to see. Um, so, you know, those two guys, both I thought had a great day. <laughs> like Rustin said, Dayton Sneed, <laughs> Uh, hey, orange man. and white all American. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that was exciting to see Dayton get out there. I don't know how much PT Dayton's going to get during the season, but, <laughs> uh, that was exciting to see him out here, especially when what is probably the deepest wide receiver room Tennessee has had since Heupel's been there. So, um, coming out of the scrimmage positions that I feel great about are defensive line for sure wide receiver for sure feel pretty good about quarterback because you know lord forbid if something did happen to nico gaston moore he can sling it like he 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 can do it so i feel good about gaston um and i mean like i said you got to feel good about the wide receivers i do want to mention what uh, when we talk about offensive positions and defensive positions of concern. I think there's one very obvious one on both sides of the ball. And I actually don't think it's the running backs on the the offensive side of the ball. So Dylan Sampson didn't play. Cam Selden didn't play. Both of them will be ready before the season starts. Then you've got Deshaun Bishop, who everybody has been raving about all spring long, just like they did last year. And that and that's what kills me is that everybody all off season was like they totally it seems like they had forgotten about Deshaun Bishop when they're talking about you know Peyton Lewis is going to come in and be that fourth you know, third or fourth running back behind people were talking about you know Dylan Sampson, Cam Selden, Khalifa Keith, and Peyton Lewis. And I'm like, what about Deshaun Bishop? He's the guy that everybody was talking about last spring. He's the guy everybody's talking about this spring. And you'll notice who got out there with the ones when Dylan Sampson wasn't getting out there. Deshaun Bishop. I mean, like the guy has people's attention. And so in my opinion, you got at least four deep, maybe five deep in the running back room right now. Um, it would, I think it would personally be very, very difficult to go out and find somebody that's worth paying money to when they know that, you know, they're going to be the third string running back. Uh, I, I don't think that's going to happen. And that was what, you know, Volquest was saying the other day too, and I totally agreed with him. I don't think you're going to find anybody to fit that bill. Um, so I'm not concerned about the the running backs. <clears throat> Mr. Osborne just got mine. He, that's exactly who it is. It's the offensive line. That's here's the thing. K, you know, Cooper didn't play. Obviously, he's going to be your starting center. Lance Hurd's going to be your starting left tackle. Uh, Javante Spragans is going to be your starting right tackle. Excuse me, right guard. And, uh, uh, oh gosh, I'm blanking on his name. Played left tackle last year. Dane Davis. No, he blocked, no, he uh, blocked John the Cam- dude. John Campbell. John Campbell. John Campbell's going to be your starting right tackle. He'll block somebody into the tunnel again this year, probably, uh, like he did the first game against Virginia last year. The 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 hole in, in that offensive line is left guard. And so you got to find a left guard. Um, I would not be upset at all if they went into the portal and found a left guard because you got to find one. Um, After that first group, you've got a lot of guys who have, you know, some, some good 
reps on him and stuff, but nothing proven, which is obviously a concern. Um, so I'm not concerned about the skill positions at all because they got weapons for days. But they just have to make sure that Nico has enough time to distribute the ball to those weapons. That's the main thing. Now, on the defensive side of the ball, <clears throat> I don't think there's any doubt it's the defensive backs. If there's an if there's an area of concern on the on the defensive side, it's them. And I say that for one primary reason. And Josh Heupel said it after the game. They asked him, you know, how did how did the offense get so open and that kind of stuff? And he said, Well, it wasn't that we were getting so open. It was that they were we had some defensive backs out of alignment and out of out of position. And nowhere was that more evident on the Gaston Moore touchdown pass to Mike Matthews. Uh, yeah, it was a beautiful pass, beautiful ball. But if you go back and watch that replay, Khalifa Keith coming out of the backfield, nobody picked him up. Uh, no linebacker, no safety, nobody picked up Khalifa Keith coming out of the backfield. They could, I mean, I'm not joking. When when Gaston threw the ball to Mike Matthews, there was nobody within 20 to 25 yards. That's not even an exaggeration. There was nobody within 20, 25 yards of Khalifa Keith. And, you know, it was obviously a, a touchdown to Mike Matthews, so that's awesome. But, dude, somebody better be picking up the back out of the backfield <laughs> because they could have passed it to him, and he could he could still be running for all we know. I mean, like, it was just – he was so wide open. So those, those two spots, I'm sure that will all get worked out before the fall, but those would be the two spots or two position groups that if – I were concerned about one, it would be those. Uh, some of the other comments that came through, Big Orange Vol said Dalton threw out the first pitch that he did. He uh, threw a, maybe a high strike, but it was probably a strike. Uh, but he went Kirby to the top a good of job the framing it. He but did. He went, he went to the rubber. I was proud of him. And even Todd Helton, which I thought was weird, like he didn't go he down. Yep. Yeah, that was odd. Um Big Orange Vol said, what do y'all think our record will be this year in football? I hope 10 and 2. I think, do you want to give your answer first? You want me to? I'm not answering that until after the portal's done. I yeah, that's totally fair. So I don't, here, I don't think we know enough about any of these teams yet. No, we don't know. And that's a good point. We don't know who's going to be on Tennessee's team. We don't know who's going to be on any of the other SEC teams right now, really because that portal's about to open back up for post-spring. And, I mean, listen, if, if we're sitting here saying this is the deepest wide receiver room Tennessee's had in years, and and all those wide receivers are hearing the, the commentators say that, there might be a wide receiver or two that's like, you know what, this is the deepest wide receiver room we've had in years. I'm not going to be on the field, and they might leave. So you just don't know what's about to happen over the next few weeks in the portal. And nobody knows. That's the thing. Like, nobody knows who's going to be on any of the SEC teams. So I think my answer would have to be, if if I have to say right now, based on who's on the teams right now, I think that the most important game on Tennessee's schedule is actually at Oklahoma. It's like week four, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. That's kind of a big game because that's going to really – that'll be Nico's first true road game that's going to really set the tone for the rest of the season. If they make it through that game, which I think they will, then I think they have a very strong chance to go 10 and two. And honestly, a chance to go 11 and one, because in my personal opinion, if listen, Nico doesn't have to be Hinton hooker. He doesn't have to be Nico has to be a person who doesn't turn the ball over. That's all he has to do. He has to make the right reads and not turn it over. If he does that, then Tennessee has a chance to be the best team they've had since Josh Heupel's been there because they have talent all over the field, especially on offense. They got people everywhere they can give the ball to. So as far as a talent and a depth perspective, they're going to have the best defensive line they've had yet since Heupel's been there. They're going to have the best linebacker crew they've had since, since Heupel's been there. Um, they have the pieces to be really good. I think a lot of season momentum hinges on that Oklahoma game at Oklahoma early in the year. Uh, so could they go 10 and two? Absolutely. They can. 
Could they go 11 and one? Absolutely. They can. And it's good because they have, um, actually they don't even play Missouri this year. Never mind. Uh, they have, uh, Alabama at home. And I think, you know, that's a huge advantage. Uh, so should be, should be fun. Uh, let's see. Austin Ireland said Dayton Sneed first team, all orange and white two years in a row. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Zach, hey Zach, welcome buddy. Good to have you. I said, how's your weekend going? It's been great, man. Tennessee's won a whole lot. That's been good. Uh, let's see. Big orange ball said, wasn't our O line in the finals for that award for the best O line in the nation somehow last year? Uh, I'm not sure. I know that uh, if they were, if they, well, there you go. Uh, the year before that, they definitely should have been as well. Um, let's see. Zach said, sorry, I haven't been on lately. Life's been keeping me busy. Well, we're glad you're here right now, buddy. Uh, he said, we sweep the national champions. Absolutely, we did. Uh, Zach said, I'm a little bit worried about our freshman running backs. Um, so really, it's just Peyton Lewis because Deshaun Bishop technically is a redshirt freshman. But he's going to, I'm telling you, Deshaun's going to be on the field as the number three back right now at the worst. I mean, dude is a player. Zach said they're going 16 on winning national championship. <laughs> I love it. Um, Zach said when they go to Oklahoma, Hypo is not going to lose to his former team. Uh, I, I think they're going to win as well, but I think it's definitely going to set the tone for the whole season. Uh, let's see. Mr. Osborne said to make the playoff, we probably need to at least be 10 and two, 100%. Yes, I agree. He said, I'm not saying we achieve that record, but to have a good chance at the playoff 10 and two are better as the goal. 100% agree. Absolutely. Uh, let's see, Stashman, that's like the best name of anybody that we have on all of YouTube. Uh, he said, our defensive backs, is this Kirby Cannell? Is that who this is? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he said, our defensive backs have not ever played together. They are way more athletic than we had last year. They will get way better before the season starts, Half Faith Ball Nation. Cosign, I 100% agree with that. What do you yeah. think, Rustin, you agree with that? Yeah, again, they were playing at just a very base defense. Like you, it's hard to gauge where they really are because, I mean, honestly, it's also kind of hard to gauge how well the quarterbacks played. It felt like they made good reads and made good throws, but they also weren't facing anything. They, you know, it's easy to make throws when you know where the defender is going to be. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, let's see. Danny White tweeted out. He quote tweeted Tennessee baseball's tweet and said how sweep it is. Congrats, fellas. That's pretty good. Uh, AD's getting in on it too. Uh, Zach said, not going to lie, I think Nico could do what even him and couldn't. That's beat teams like Georgia. Maybe. Um, I mean, he's definitely got the pedigree for it. So we'll see what happens. Um, major, major talent. That's for sure. Big Orange Vol said, I actually think we'll be better in 2025 and we should be good this year. So with the people that they would have coming back on the offensive side of the ball, we would have pretty much, well, pretty much anybody could come back if they want to except Brew McCoy and maybe Dante Thornton. Um, Cooper Mays would not be able to come back. Javante Spragans would not be able to come back. John Campbell would not be able to come back. So the center and whole right side of your offensive line will not be returning next year. That hurts. Uh, that that hurts. Um, so I hope I, mean, I hope we're even better next year, and I would think you're going to see a whole bunch of portal uh, additions next year as well, especially on offensive line. I'm going to tell you right now, I'll be very surprised to see, uh, curious to see what Bennett Warren does, uh, and when he gets on campus this summer. Because he might be an answer at left guard. I mean, it'll be interesting to see what ends up happening with him. Um, so, orange and white game, always fun. Always a fun time. Um, hope that uh, all the fans enjoyed it because it was really cool. You have a little bit more access to the players on in the orange and white game than you do in the fall. So, really cool. Really cool to see the basketball team walking down ball walk with them. I think they loved that. And it was really, I'm telling you, that video, Rustin quote tweeted it from Revolver's Bros account, the video of Rick Barnes and Josh Heupel, like they genuinely like each other. Mm -hmm. Like it's fun to see. Um, 
Well, so to the 355 people who are watching with us on X, Facebook, and YouTube, welcome. We're glad you're with us. Um, oh, Mr. Osborne said, I have an excellent point on Bennett Warren, sir. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm really excited about that kid. Really excited to see, um, you know, what he's able to do. Uh, Zach said, that's it, Evan. It's fun. That's all these games are for the fans. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was it was a fun day for fans. Uh, you know, my, my, I know my son and, we all love going up there for this uh, orange and white game. It just didn't happen to work out this year because, you know, only 10,000 people were allowed in the stadium. So um, looking forward to going next year. Hopefully, you know, all that works out and everything. Uh, so Rustin, apparently Tennessee baseball team is pretty good. Uh, they, <laughs> uh, they're very good at hitting home runs. And in honor of that, we actually added a new item to our merch shop. Uh, there you go. Hitting dingers. I uh, love it. It's awesome. That's a sticker you can put on a water bottle or whatever. Uh, we got other stuff too. Pickleball paddle set. Hey man, hitting dingers on the pickleball court. Look at that. Look at that right there. I love it. Uh, you can get it in different colors. Wow. Look at that summit blue, man. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, we got hoodies. Don't really need that right now, but come, uh, next February, that'd be good to have. <laughs> uh, so we got that going on. And I'll tell you what, just because I want to make it easy for everybody, I'm just, you know, nice guy like that. Uh, I'm going to copy that link and I'm going to put it in the comments so that everybody can have it. So right now it's on Facebook and YouTube. Now I'm going to put it in the comments on Twitter as well. And so there you go. Boom, right there. Now it's on Twitter. Um, so hitting dingers. I love that little design. That was, that was a fun little thing I did yesterday. Uh, Zach said he played pickleball today. Hey, that's what I'm talking about, man. Hey, not, and Hey, uh, that's what I'm talking about. He said, buy one after the show. I love it. That's what I'm talking about. And Hey, right now for the, for the next six days until Saturday, you can get 10% off in the whole store, any item in the store, just using code vols, V O L S vols. Uh, so, you Coe's Vols, and you got 10% off in the whole store. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Big Orange Vol said, we have another legit shot at another baseball national championship this year. He said, man, we have been talented during the Tony era for sure. This may be the best hitting team they, they've had yet since he's been there. And that's saying a lot when you think about the 2022 team. Um, let's see. Big Orange Vol said, let's get us the national championship. Absolutely. Um, let's see. Austin said, what level did Bennett Warren play in Texas? He definitely has a frame and weight that could help him play early. Uh, I'm not sure what level he played at in Texas. So, Preston may know. Yeah. So he actually played at Fort Bend Christian, which they're in the, they're in the taps league and they're the, one of the largest schools. They're five a and taps. Um, if you don't know how Texas does things, uh, they're, they have a private school league, that is fairly separate from the public school league. And his school was one of the largest private schools in the state of Texas. So, um, you know, that's a, it, it's hard to compare apples to apples, or, but, um, you know, five a and taps is pretty legit football. There, there's a lot of money flowing through those schools. Uh, big orange ball said, we're getting a bunch of new baseball uniforms next year. I think, uh, that'd be cool. Seven of them. Really? Yeah, Nike announced they're replacing the entire thing. They're getting seven new uniforms next year. Man, I hope the the Sunday cream stay. That's I'm tomorrow. sure they will. That's that's been a mainstay. They'll probably they'll probably alter it a little bit, but uh Zach said give Josh Heupel and Tony Vitello a lifetime contract. That's cool with me, buddy. <laughs> uh so that'd be cool to see what they come out with next year. All right. So Rustin. Tennessee baseball sweeps LSU, reigning national champions. Really just three very impressive games. Obviously, Christian Moore had, he had himself a day today. So give me your thoughts on the weekend as a whole. And if you could pick one performance of the weekend that you thought was just really stellar, what would you pick? Ooh, <laughs> that's a hard question. Um, well, first of all, in the last 14 games against LSU, Tony V is now 10 and four. Um, 
that That's that huge. in that in of itself is outstanding. Um, one thing I was going to point out and this is not the performance question you asked. I'll get back to that in a second. But one thing I was going to point out, uh, Christian Moore, Blake Burke, and Billy Amick all weekend long combined to go 406 with five home runs and nine RBIs. Um, that is outstanding production from the top of the order. They got good, good swings out of the whole order. But when your three top guys are table setting like that, it makes everybody else's life so much easier. Um, you know, so for those three guys to hit over 400 with five bombs and nine RBIs, that's just a huge weekend for the three of them. Um, Billy's on, first pitch and first swing back yeah. from his appendix injury. Yeah. <laughs> that still cracks me up that that's what they Don't call it. Don't need no stupid appendix. <laughs> yeah. The first swing back yard. <laughs> and it wasn't close. He crushed that ball. Um, honestly, I would either go with Chris Stamos or AJ Causey. Um, I love, nice. I love the innovation of, Hey, let's run a, let's run an opener out there. For those of you who don't know what that is, you know, all of baseball has a closer. That's the guy you bring in at the end of the game to, to finish the game off. But there's a concept in college baseball where you have an opener and it's basically a reliever who goes out there and just gets quick outs for two, three innings and then gets you to the guy that you really wanted to start, but maybe isn't comfortable starting. And I think they figured out that's who AJ Causey is. They just need somebody to go out there in front of him for a couple of innings, let him settle in. And then he comes in and just as lights out. And, you know, Chris Stamos did a fantastic job setting that up. And then here came AJ Causey and he was about unhittable. Um, it was, it was fun to watch. And then right after him, here came Kirby Cannell, and that was all they could they could do. Um, so you know, you got hard throwing lefty, then sidearm righty, then slow throwing lefty. It's hard for teams to adapt to that. And I think they figured out what their Friday night rotation is going to be moving forward. Drew Beam was outstanding. Xander Seacrest was outstanding today. He did a heck of a job. All of a sudden, Xander Seacrest has gone from our middle middle week guy who throws two or three innings to we can get six or seven innings out of him every Sunday. Um, he's really stepped up and is throwing the ball really, really well. Um, you know, I just, people keep saying, I'm not sure about the pitching staff, not sure about the pitching staff, but the pitching staff just went out and swept the defending national champs. And LSU didn't look very good swinging the bat this weekend. Like they had a few nice shots, but overall, they didn't really hit it that well. Yeah, I mean, anytime you sweep an SEC opponent, it's always a good weekend. Anytime you sweep the defending national champions, that's a great weekend. <laughs> Especially when that team is purple and gold and they're wearing LSU on their jerseys. Uh, that is a huge deal that they swept them. Uh, if I had to pick one performance, you know, you mentioned Xander Seacrest today was fantastic, and he sure was. And you were right on the money by A.J. Causey, too. But the guy that I'm going to pick, the guy that immediately I thought of when I asked this question was Drew Beam. Um, Drew Beam, he was the other pitcher in his game. And what I mean by that, and by the way, to the 409 people who are watching with us, thank you for joining us. We appreciate you. We're glad you're with us. Uh, but when I say Drew Beam was the other pitcher, Holman was getting all the praise, and rightfully so. The dude was no hitting, arguably the best hitting team in baseball for what, six or seven innings? Seven six innings. Third. Right? Yeah, six there you go. Third. So, I mean, like, that's crazy good. Drew Beam was hanging right with him. Yeah. Um, Drew Beam had only allowed one run the whole game. And, uh, you know, until that, um, until he came out of the game there. So he was, here's Drew Beam just shutting down LSU, the defending national champs. And he's not even the one people are talking about in the game. He's the other guy just trying to hang with. Uh, I mean, you think about that. If the When he's sitting in the dugout and he knows by the fourth or fifth inning, he's like, man, we still haven't got a hit off this guy. And he knows he has to go out there and shut them down so that the lead doesn't extend to a point that's unreachable when we haven't gotten a single hit yet. That's a lot of pressure that, that he's probably putting on himself every time he's sitting in the dugout 
watching our guys go three up, three down. Okay. And so to come out there and have the performance he did and the mental fortitude that he did, that was incredibly impressive. So I'm going to give my, my performance of the weekend to Drew Beam because it was just fabulous. And then, man, it's really hard not to – gosh, you mentioned all three of them. But, you know, Saturday, Friday, Saturday, it's really hard not to just be absolutely thrilled with how Billy Amick's playing. And then today, you've got Blake Burke and Christian Moore just killing the ball. Uh, you know, Christian Moore had a double and a home run. And honestly, I, I promise you, I think he hit the the double harder than he did the home run. Yeah. I mean, even Chris Burke was like, man, that was a laser. Out there. <laughs> uh, but the hardest hit ball of the day easily was when Christian Moore hit it. I think literally out of the park. I think it cleared the third level in the porch out there. So, I mean, it is, it's a whole lot of fun to watch Tennessee play baseball right now. Um, any, any time, any time they come to the plate, it is must see TV. Uh, people all over the, the world, I'm sure stop doing what they're doing because <laughs> they heard, Oh wait, Tennessee's about to hit and they just watch. And because it's just, it's amazing. It's absolutely, it is so much fun to watch them swing the bats right now. Uh, let's see here. Some of the comments that came through big orange ball said Kentucky is 14 and one in sec play right now, but our balls are going to give them a few L's in, in Lexington this weekend. All right. So I'm glad you mentioned that. So, Tennessee's next series next weekend. They play uh, Alabama A and M. I think this on Tuesday. No. Uh, this Tuesday we're going to watch an absolute bloodletting take place. Um, they play Bellarmine. Oh, that's this week. I thought that was a week uh, next week. My bad. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's this Tuesday. Um, and the reason I say bloodletting is Bellarmine is currently six and twenty nine. That's not good. That's not good. <laughs> yeah. It's Bellerman. On t- yeah. It's Bellerman on Tuesday. Oh, hold on. It gets worse. They Was are six- Alabama A&M last week. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, That's why I had that in my mind. Listen to some of these numbers. Bellerman is currently six and 29. They, um, they at one point had a 23 game losing streak going. And nice. this past and this past weekend, they lost two out of three to the University of North Alabama. In which game or in the weekend, they were outscored forty-eight to sixteen. Well, those Northern Alabama bats can really come alive. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. So if the University of North Alabama can score forty-eight runs on them in one weekend. Tuesday is going to be an awful thing to watch. Someone may die. <laughs> like it's yikes. So big orange of all, he said, you know, next weekend and he's right next weekend, they're at Kentucky. Now here's the deal. Kentucky is number one in the sec right now, as far as sec standings go, um, because they're 14 and one in the conference right now. Now, I'm going to tell you, this is going to be really interesting next weekend because, as we all know, Tennessee has thrived off of hitting baseballs crazy far uh, this this year. <laughs> uh, multiple home runs all the time. They did it again today. They had, what, a, at least a, a two, no, a three, three home run day today? Yeah, three home run game mm-hmm. today. Um, I mean, that's, that's, that's how they're playing the game right now. Kentucky's ballpark is one of the biggest ballparks in the whole SEC. One of the biggest in the whole country. Yeah, it is. It is not a hitter's park at all. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens this weekend. I mean, clearly their pitching is doing well if they're 14 and one in the SEC. Yep. And clearly they're hitting the ball just fine. So, it was actually in last Tuesday against Alabama and M Tennessee only had one home run in that game. I think Isn't that funny. We said they only had one home run. <laughs> That's how good they are. Uh, they were just, they were, you know, hitting singles and doubles all over the place. They're going to have to have that kind of game at Kentucky. 
because that park is going to hold a whole lot more than what they've been seeing in other parks. So um, it'll be a very interesting series. That's all, that's all I can say. I hope Tennessee wins the series. I hope they do. Um, but it's going to be, it's going to be different. That's for sure. It's, it's going to be a different kind of series. It could be a top five series. So Kentucky is number eight in the country right now. They just swept Auburn. Um, number one, number one, Arkansas just lost two out of three to Alabama. Number two, Clemson just lost two out of three to North Carolina state. Number three, Texas A&M just obliterated Vanderbilt outscored them 36 to six in three games. Um, and number four, Tennessee just swept LSU. So when the new poll comes out, A&M should be number one, Tennessee should be number two. It'll be interesting to see how far they drop Arkansas and um, and uh, Clemson, um, but it's possible Kentucky could sneak their way all the way up to number five, and this could be number two against number five for the weekend. It's going to be a fantastic weekend of baseball. I mean, it really is. Um, Zach said Kentucky is good, but they're not on our level. Well, we're about to find out. <laughs> we are about to find out. Uh, let's see. Big Orange Ball said we are 8 0 at home against LSU over the last three years. That's pretty awesome. That is pretty awesome, man. Uh, let's see. Uh, Zach said we need to be number one, uh, Arkansas. Uh, Big Orange Ball said we made a lot of Raging Cajuns mad this weekend watching these games in the Swamplands. Go Big Orange. Absolutely. Uh, Zach said he was at Taco Mac yelling like crazy during the game today. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Big Orange Ball said they're going to give number one to Texas A&M probably. Yep. And rightfully so. Um, let's see. Zach said in what cornhole? <laughs> uh, they're a pretty good baseball team. Pretty good. Yeah, They just beat Vandy 36 to six in three games. They, they can play. Uh, Sam Hargrove. Welcome, Sam. Good to have you with us. He said Christian Moore with a great follow through pose at the plate. Okay. So since he mentioned this, uh, Rustin, I hadn't asked you about this yet. Did you happen to see the the video from Ole Miss and, and Mississippi State baseball game today where the Ole Miss guy or Mississippi State guy hit a home run and then carried the bat with him over halfway down the first baseline? That was last then, night. Oh, that was last night? Yeah. And then he threw it way up in the air, and Bianco went crazy, and they caught him hot mic on the – I mean, he was like – yeah. You should you should have effing thrown him out like saying it like was, over and over. I was watching it live when it happened, um, and Bianco had a gripe because mm-hmm. the the point of emphasis this year is you cannot throw the bat toward the opposing right. team's dugout, and he absolutely did. It should I mean, have been was, an immediate ejection. Yeah, I mean I've seen ups throwing people out this year for way less than that. I mean that was that was blatant. Like if there was an, an example that they will show to people in like training sessions, that was it. <laughs> the dude carried the bat over halfway down the line and then flipped it way up in the air. And Ron Hart did a great job calling the game and trying to cover over what was happening on that hot mic. <laughs> uh, he, he covered it really well, like a pro, but um, man, that was bizarre. That was bizarre. Uh, let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, Sam said, what's the record for the most runs in one inning, most home runs in one inning? Oh, I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, maybe Audrey Kaler will find that out for us. Audrey, if you're watching, uh, actually, I appreciate think, it. <laughs> actually, I think I've got it. Um, if this is correct, it was actually Belmont University um, against UT Martin. In 2015, Belmont scored 20 runs in an inning and had six home runs. Holy cow. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. 43 total bases, 26 plate appearances in one inning. Whoa. Belmont finished the game with 31 hits. Man. Um, Let's see. Big Orange Ball said, I hope we sweep Florida. Amen. I'm all for that every year. Let's do it. All the time. Hey, Florida's, 
Florida is catering or cratering right now. They are yeah, they're not, not having well. well. They got massive a problems. Uh, Big Orange Ball said he saw that bat flip too, and he said, "I'm like that authority to be able to throw people out," which shocked me that the dude didn't. Like, right. I, I mean, I'm still shocked. That was, was the textbook. Yeah, that was the biggest issue. It should have been immediate ejection. And yeah, that was no why hesitation. Bianco lost his mind because it was, I mean, of all the things that are easy for them to call, throwing a bat at the opposing team's dugout is an immediate ejection, is a literal rule. <laughs> like, it, it should Over, have been simple. Yeah, and it wasn't like, you know, there was like a soft flip after he hit the home run, which I saw, I've seen people get thrown out this year for just barely flipping it at all yep. while they're still in the batter's box. Dude carried the bat with him over halfway down the line well, and then threw it way up in the air. <laughs> well, you know who it was, don't you? It was the catcher that got uh, all the stuff riled up. Yeah. Yep. Same guy. <laughs> uh, but what, what made it even better, though, was that that was in the top half Ole Miss came back after Bianco got got ejected. It fired Ole Miss's players up, and they came back and won that thing in the bottom half. Yep. Uh, Austin said Florida with problems couldn't happen to a better school. <laughs> uh, Big Orange Vol said the umps get into it too much. We need to get rid of them as a whole and let device call balls and strikes. Uh, let's see. I would agree with that if Angel Hernandez is behind the plate. Oh my goodness, that guy's ridiculous. He is ridiculous. Uh, that that video of him this weekend was hilarious and, and sad at the same time. Really, um, Sam said Tennessee throws a bat, guarantee it's an ejection. Yeah, you're exactly right, buddy. You're exactly right. Yep, absolutely. Um, any other thoughts about uh, the baseball team and and what's coming up for him? That, that series next weekend is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. this weekend, every single game was nationally televised. Mm -hmm. If those if those polls end up where we think they're going to end up and it's number two versus number five, all three games will probably be nationally televised again. Um, you know, kind of, kind of incredible. When you think back to the Todd Raleigh days, um, kind of incredible to imagine a Tennessee baseball program that has its entire weekend series, two straight weekends nationally televised. Like that's, we're a long way from Todd Raleigh. And you know, Friday night was ESPNU. It wasn't even SEC network. Yep. So, uh, pr pretty cool. Um, big orange ball. said, I'm not really being biased, but if y'all noticed LSU gets a lot of calls in baseball. Yeah. I mean, they're they're the they're the but do you realize golden child again huge kudos to our pitching staff because we played three nine inning games this weekend so 27 innings against the defending national champions lsu scored eight runs that that with metal bats like that's that's just unheard of very impressive so if you're just joining us, we got 473 people with us right now. If you're just joining us, man, we have got a cool new design in our merch shop, uh, hitting dingers. We got this sticker right here. Uh, we got, Hey man, get your pickleball game on. We got pickleball sets. Look at all these colors, man. How about that? Look at that summit blue. Man, that's the, that's the stuff hitting dingers and pickleball. There you go. Uh, let's see. We got multiple t-shirts, we got hoodies. We got all kinds of stuff. So uh like that shirt right there 24.99 you get that man that's a good looking deal right there y'all so uh that those those um absolutely mino like he said hitting dingers absolutely that's what we do leading the country in it that's what we do um so i would strongly invite people to <laughs> check that out the the link is in the comments on all three platforms that we're on right now uh, let's see. It's also all over our Twitter account. If you want to go on there over the last couple of days, uh, 10% off on the store right now, the whole store, 10% off use code VOLS, V-O-L-S, and you get 10% off. Uh, let's see. Big Orange Vols said Vols pitching shut them down this weekend. Absolutely, man. Sam said it sounds like our football recruiting went well this weekend as well. Agreed. It did sound Big like weekend. that. Had a lot of talent on campus. A lot of talent. Uh 
Not just a big recruiting weekend for football, real big recruiting weekend for basketball too. Darlin Stone Dubar and Cade Tyson were both there for all of the orange and white festivities. And Tuesday, Igor Milicic is showing up. And if you have not watched his film, don't see 6'10 and think, oh, just another Jonas Adu post player. No, 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 no. Igor Milicic is a 6'10 wing who can post Charlotte play inside and outside can shoot the three he is a true european wing yeah. and he is fun to watch yep that was exactly what i was going to say he is a true european basketball player so um very cool very cool well so this has been a lot of fun and i appreciate it oh go ahead we got a spotlight one more lady vols went down to starkville Carlin Pickens got absolutely ripped Friday night. Um, dropped game one. Peyton Gottschall walks out there in game two and just absolutely obliterates Mississippi State. They try to bring Carlin Pickens back today. First three innings, she gets ripped again. Peyton Gottschall comes in, slams the door, and wins the series. Listen to Peyton Gottschall's numbers on the weekend because this is this is huge. 2-0. and oh, in 10 and two-thirds innings, 13 strikeouts, one walk, one run. Praise God for Peyton Gottschall. <laughs> because if it wasn't for her, the Lady Vols would have dropped a series this weekend, and she pretty much went out there and said, no, 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 get on my back. We're going to win. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, start. Uh, Mississippi State was ranked number 14 or 17, something like yeah, that. Yeah, somewhere in there. Depends on it. There's like six different polls, but yeah, somewhere yep. in there. So number four against number 14. Uh, that's huge, man. At their place. That's yeah. Huge win the series. 10 and uh, two thirds innings. One run. One walk. That's crazy. 13 that strikeouts. Is, that's awesome. One walk. That's awesome. Uh, hey, Mina Lucky switched her name to Hitting Dingers. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> She said, "That's that's crazy. That is crazy, statue. I agree. It's totally. I mean, it's awesome, man. Thank you for sweat. That's a cool name you got there. I like that." <laughs> uh, Big Orange Vols said, "Lady Vols winning a whole lot of sports. Absolutely, they do." Oh, oh, I'm glad you said that because that reminded me. I've I've made a note to mention this tonight. So we had another really important thing. All right, uh, Miss Sears. On the track team, she ran this weekend the second fastest 100-meter dash in college track and field history, women's college track and field history, 100-meter dash in 10.77 seconds, number two collegiately all-time, number 15 world all-time, number seven American runners all-time, so that includes Olympians and stuff too. I mean, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> that is absolutely incredible. So, uh, Miss Sears, kudos to you uh, for doing that. I'm sure she watches the Volbros, <laughs> uh, but kudos to her. That is awesome. Uh, hitting dingers, that's Mina Lackey. She said, "Wow, absolutely. I'm loving that name." By the way, uh, if if you if you're wondering why we have, now have 492 people watching, if you're wondering why uh, Mina Lackey has changed her name to Hitting Dingers. You can go look at our merch shop right now or click the comments. Ours in the link in the comments and you can see uh, the awesome shirt that we have on there right now. Uh, let's see. Um, Big Orange Vols said, you know, the Lady Vols have more, most national championships for Tennessee. They got eight. Uh, let's see. Taylor May. Welcome, Taylor May. Good to have you. Apparently, Karen has a pitcher coming in next year from Texas who is elite, elite. Hey, I like to hear that. That's going to be awesome, man. Uh, he also said that it's going to be hard to find a left guard in football. I agree. And I think they got to go in the portal to do so. Um, because that is the one spot that we have to get shored up because, you know, we can say, well, we have Dane Davis and that's true. We do. Okay. But after Dane Davis, who's next, that's the problem. Because I mean, we talked about it. We saw this happen last year. You have to have five really good guys to start the game. But man, you got to have five really good dudes to come in behind him too, because, I mean, unfortunately, that position, it's a, it's a, 
ex- extremely susceptible to injury. Unfortunately, uh, you got uh, you got other offensive linemen who can roll up on your ankle when they get blocked into you. You got running backs who can roll up on a, a knee or an ankle as they're cutting and coming through the hole. I mean, it's just it's a it's a dangerous position. Taylor Med said you got to break out that wallet. Absolutely. And honestly, of all the places that they need to do that, I agree with Rustin. It needs to be at safety, and it needs to be at offensive line. Those are the two spots. Uh, they have four solid running backs. I'm not as concerned about running back as I am those two spots. But I'm not in charge, so they didn't ask me. Um, well, this has been a lot of fun. Wait, we got 500 people now. We just crossed over 500. Welcome, everybody. To what um, to what she was saying about or whoever it was mentioned he whoever it was mentioned uh, the pitcher that the lady Vol signed from from Texas this is actually the number four rated recruiting class in America um, and weirdly that pitcher is also the number four ranked pitcher nationally um, pretty good yeah for those who don't know the top junior catcher in America has also already committed to the lady Vols. And she might be the number one overall player in the junior class in the entire country at any position. Um, so recruiting is going very well. That's the kid from Knoxville, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, originally Indiana, but now Knoxville. Yeah, that was an uh, interesting, uh, it, you know, coincidence totally worked out. It was <laughs> Just happened. Yeah, I'm sure they just, you know, they probably like the mountains. And so they came to East Tennessee. I'm sure that's what it was. Um, yeah, I'm sure it's just a coincidence. It's uh, amazing or, how right after she set the national high school home run record for a season as a high school freshman, that she just magically moved to Knoxville the next year. <laughs> I'm sure there was no correlation at all. The Smoky Mountains, man. They just call your name, you know, like you can't you can't resist. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Sam said, aren't we limited on scholarships this year for football? I'm hearing they need a few players at the portal. I'm not sure. I, I, I couldn't give a, a solid answer on that because I'm, I'm not sure about that. Uh, let's see. I don't know. I, I think tracking portal numbers is a, an advanced algebra that I just can't do. Now they were limited last year for sure. I remember that. Uh, I don't know about this year. Uh, but they they had fewer than normal last year. But um, you can all rest assured, as soon as spring practice ends and that portal opens back up, ooh, but there's gonna be movement, and and people just need to know it's gonna happen, and you can't freak out about it. Yeah, like it's it is what it is, and you know if we do need to free up some spots, it's gonna happen because we're gonna have guys leave who are gonna look around and go. Yeah, this is the deepest team I've ever played on, and I'm not going to get to play here. So, you know, especially in the wide receiver room, you know, Mike Matthews and Braylon Staley have been showing out. Some of those sophomores probably aren't going to hang around. Yeah. Um, I can't remember who it was that said it. It might have been Aaron Torres. I can't remember for sure. But one of the national media guys was talking about, they said that when the portal opens after spring practice ends, he said this will be the most wild, crazy portal season or window that we've ever had. Um, and I agree with him. Like it's it's gonna be it's gonna be bonkers. Um so there like and that's why, you know, earlier we said we you can't even really predict teams' records for next year at this point because the teams themselves have no idea. The coaches for the teams themselves have no idea who's ultimately going to be on that roster. Yep. June. Uh, Cause there's going to be a whole, there's going to be a lot of movement between now and June on pretty much every roster all across the country. And so it'll be very interesting to see. Um, Sam said it was part of that NCAA settlement. Okay. There you go. Thank you for letting me know that. I appreciate that. That's good. That's good info. Um, Mina Lackey hitting dingers. That's what I'm talking about. She said, I'm still shell-shocked over Adu. I agree. I agree. Uh, Tony said, I think we have at least two to three leaving the football portal. I I think that's a very safe number. I agree with that. I think you're going to have at least one wide receiver. Um, I think you'll have at least probably one defensive lineman. Um, Because, I mean, here's the thing. They're going to have 14 guys 
by the time Jamal Wallace gets on campus, they'll have 14 guys that they can rotate on defensive line. I mean, that ele- number 11 or number 12 guy might be like, you know, I can probably go play a whole lot more somewhere else. And I get that. I understand that. So I'd say you probably have at least one guy on there. And I mean, there, there'll probably be more, but um, I think two to three is, is at least the spot on starting number there. Um, so a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff coming up for sure. Um, so we hope everybody has a great week, uh, man, just a huge week ahead of us. Uh, obviously a massive series this weekend, uh, at Lexington, huge ballpark. So may not have as many home runs as we're used to. Of course, some of the ones they've been hitting, they'll no ballpark like Christian Moore's second home run today. No ballpark would hold that thing. That was crazy. Yeah. The one Billy Amick put off the scoreboard yesterday, that would have been gone everywhere. Yep. Uh, so it'll be fun to see what the Vols are able to do against Kentucky. Um, just a massive, massive weekend coming up. So hope everybody has a great week. Uh, we will see all of you very soon. And we hope everybody has a great, great evening. Uh, go Vols and have a, have a, let's see, I'm going to do the baseball because it's, it's that time. Uh, so ha- have a great evening, everybody. Uh, go Vols. Thank you.